Hello, my fellow pen enthusiasts. Got another pen review here for you. And uh, <clears throat> today I have the Wingsung 3013. So this is the new vacuum filler or vac filler that Wingsung has launched. Now this is the Bobby uh, pen version that I got. Um, this is the one that he released on uh, AliExpress. And I purchased this with that initial release that he had. I've had the pin now for a couple weeks now. Um, I, I know I shared it in one of my past uh, pin review videos. Might have been a pin news video, I can't remember. So um, I was gonna ink up the pin on camera like I've done with my other vac fillers, but I was so excited with this pin, I, I couldn't wait. So I had to, of course, um, ink it up and uh, I've been writing with it the last um, several days. Now, uh, so, First initial impressions with the pen when I received it. Now this pen does not come with any type of packaging. So there's no Wingsung box, um, just no pen coffin, nothing. It was just wrapped in uh, bubble wrap and put in a uh, one of those kind of shipping type uh, bags. But I will say it was packaged nicely. It was wrapped in basically two pieces of bubble wrap, one going around the pen and then just one just completely encasing the material or the inner bubble wrap. So there was no issues whatsoever. Um, but once I got the pen open, my first initial impress impression was the pen is, is very hefty. Um, you know, there's a lot of metal on this pen and I'll show that to you as, as we take a deeper look at the pen. And then my second um, impression with the pen that I just didn't realize in the pictures is that it actually has um, facets on it with uh, kind of a diamond shaped uh, facet in both the uh, cap up here as well as the, I guess you, uh, the piston turn knob down here, or the, the turn knob. And I think it's a nice touch. You know, there's this pin, um, it looks, I don't own one, but it looks a little bit like a Twisby vac. There are some pieces of it that are similar to a Twisby vac, VAC 700, but of course it, it is it is its own pin in its own right. It's not really necessarily like a pin BBS 456, and I like that fact about it. So I mean, I think that's something that's nice. It definitely looks unique. Design-wise, it's not crazy. It's a little bit minimalistic, especially the this version with it just being a transparent clear, but I think in all in all, it's a, it's a nice looking pen, especially for it being a $10 and under uh, fountain pen. So let's take a deeper look at the pen. So up at the top, we have our finial up here, nice uh, metal finial. We've got a clip here, very springy. Um, you can tell that it, it's attached up here and you can see already that there's a screw there. It'll be interesting to see over time if that screw, if there's any issues as far as ink getting in there and causing corrosion. Um, I know it's something I always um, kind of worry about with a, with a pen like that type of design, but only time will tell. Now, <clears throat> getting a closer look at that cap, you can see, I think it's really cool. I like to sit here and troll it around. Uh, the nib definitely looks neat. When you get it on the underside of the feed where the ink shows through, I think it looks kind of cool, you know. Um, it kind of gives you that glass look to it, so to speak. Um, I think it looks nice. And then, of course, we have a really nice wide cap band here at the end. I like the fact that they put it down at the base. Um, you know, you put a lot of stress and tension on this, and I'll show you, you really do on this pen especially. Um, these Chinese characters, I'm assuming you say Wing Sung. Uh, maybe they say something else. Um, and then we have 3013 on the back side. Now my pen did come, I did not do this. This looks like it had a sticker on it. I haven't cleaned it off yet. Um, it's actually already kind of coming off. Uh, when I probably clean, clean the pen, um, I'll do a little bit deeper cleaning. Most of it's come off, but I can still fill it. Um, so it probably had a sticker on there at some point, but the sticker of course is gone. Now, making our way down the barrel, you'll notice that here's our wide point here. So similar, I think this is kind of where it reminds me a little bit of the Twisby vac, is how it gets wider down here at the base, like most vac fillers, but it's really pronounced in this pen. So here's your fattest point on the actual barrel, is right here. And then it just slightly tapers down um, towards the end. Now you notice you have a nice uh, metal seal here. And back here, we've got our actual turn knob. Again, more metal in here. And you can probably see as I twirl it, those facets. 
like I said, they're kind of a, a diamond triangular shape. I think they look nice. I think it adds kind of a different element to the pen that I was surprised. I didn't notice it in the pictures. And again, you can see these facets from this angle as well. So not a, a ton to show up, no crazy material in this pen. It's just completely transparent, nothing crazy to show off as far as material goes, um, but there you have it. Now, as far as uncapping the pen, you notice there's, there's a lot of tension here. So we have one turn and let me do that again. I actually haven't counted the turns yet. This will be the first time I've done that. So there's one, there's a quarter, one and a half, so about one and three quarters of a turn to get this uh, cap off. Now you'll notice we have a rubber O-ring here and it really, um, that last kind of quarter turn, it really, you gotta really push it to get the cap on all the way. And then also to take it off, you're gonna feel a lot of tension. Now, one of the reasons I'm assuming for that is, is you can see there's no cap liner in there, um, which, I kind of wish there was at least something covering up that screw maybe. Now, one nice thing is if I ever need to take this off and get to the clip, it should be rather easy, obviously. Um, but there's no cap liner in here. So I'm assuming that this O-ring here is kind of to help seal up the uh, nib. Now I have not had any issues so far as far as hard starts go or the nib drying out. Um, <clears throat> so I have no complaints there. As far as an O-ring goes, that's rather easy to, to, to replace uh, as this uh, rubber wears out over time. Um, so again, no real real complaints. Now, you'll notice there is a, a pretty decent step down here. Um, I don't find it immensely sharp. It's not very contoured, but the uh, section here has quite a bit of a surface area from the step down to the end of the section. So I don't really notice it when I write um, so it doesn't bother me, but I did want to show that it did have that step down. Now the threads are very coarse, um, and I have no cross threading issues at all with this pen. Um, they work well. The threads uh, do not cut into you at all. So even when you're holding, say in the middle portion of the section, you might feel a little bit of the threads, but I don't, it doesn't, it's not uncomfortable whatsoever. Now I can feel that step down at times when I, depending upon the position in which I'm holding the pen, but it really doesn't bother me um, like it does in, in, on some other pens. Now, the other thing you'll notice about this section is it, it doesn't really taper down too much. Um, it does have a slight flare out at the end that you can see. The other thing you'll notice is there's a lot of metal in here. Now, I would wonder if the metal is in here to help reinforce to prevent maybe cracking. The other thing um, I would say is this pin is very back heavy. Um, and this piece back here, especially, you can really feel the weight in the back portion of the pen. So I'm wondering if this metal isn't in here as well to kind of help uh, weight it down towards the nib, J just to kind of balance out the pen, so to speak. Now, as far as the nib goes, now this is uh, one of Bobby's nibs, and this is the uh, Wingsung. Now, I did get an extra fine. And unfortunately, by the time I was able to get this pen, uh, they were he was sold out of the medium nibs on uh, the clear version and i really didn't want the other other two colors that were offered i really wanted the clear or the transparent so i went with the extra fine which i'm i'm actually i, I rather like the nib it's different than um, say a fine or a medium and it's nice to have this in my um, in my arsenal so to speak now the feed on the back of course is that clear transparent feed which i like these these are you know, again, they always mimic the color of the ink that you're using. Um, of course, I'm using a blue ink, so it's very blue right now. And I think it looks actually, actually rather uh, attractive like that. So, and of course, this is that pilot nib and feed like what you would see on a, a 78G pen, um, even kind of like, like a pilot metropolitan sort of. <clears throat> um, now, uh, does the pen post? Uh, no, it really doesn't post. It kind of just sits there. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it just doesn't post, um, which might be a deal breaker for some people. If you have very large hands, you know, I have, I would say somewhat normal size hands. Uh, for me, it's very comfortable to write with unposted. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Um, and you'll see, I'll do some sizing comparisons. This is about the same size of a four, five, four, five, six, as far as length goes unposted. I do wish it would post though, not so much for me, but I think it would 
uh, make it a little bit more appealing to other people. I will say um, I would be worried if you post it, if it didn't post too deeply, that it would really make the pin very back heavy because you'll notice whenever you're, you pick this pin up, it is definitely heavy in this back portion. You know, I'm not saying it's uncomfortable or throws it off. I think this metal in, in the section here definitely kind of balances out the weight. Um, so I don't notice it as much. And you'll notice if I kind of balance it like that, the pin's pretty good. And that's about where it sits um, in, in my, uh, my hand. It's about right there. Um, all in all, I mean, that's really the pin. Um, so I will, of course, do some sizing comparisons here in a moment. I will post a link in the description to um, uh, a, a review on uh, Scrivener of this pin. I think it will be nice to see. And I will even uh, post a picture up on the screen for you that will show this pin fully disassembled uh, as well towards the um, end of the video. Just to, so that way, for those of you that are interested, it is very easy to disassemble for the most part. Um, it, you can do it all by hand. I did disassemble this pin, really had no issues. Um, one thing that I didn't pay attention to was, and, and I found this out in that review, is that you do not, like you would with most um, vac fillers, you would typically have to unscrew your knob back here to make sure that the ink is actually getting into the feed to saturate it so you can you know, have a long writing session. This one you do not have to do. It does not have that shut off valve like most of your vac fillers have. So, which, you know, some people may like that, some people may not. If you're somebody that really likes that shut off valve, say you're traveling with the pin, something like that, and you wanna be able to shut it off so you can keep the actual barrel filled up, um, probably you might run into some leaking issues with the pin. But the good news is, is you don't have to always unscrew it whenever you're using it. Now I still find myself unscrewing it just out of habit because I do that with all my other vac fillers. But at the end of the day, I mean, just do whatever's comfortable for you. Um, I still unscrew it half the time just because it's out of habit. Um, so up next, we'll do some sizing comparisons. I will include a Pilot Metropolitan. So I know it's a one that's very popular. And then of course, we're gonna compare it to the 268 and the 456 just for sizing comparison purposes. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Now I figured I would get a little carried away with the first initial um, sizing comparison. I figured somebody, um, all of you have got to probably own you know, at least one of these pins or at least had some experiences with one of them. But to give you an idea, um, all of these pins from here down, of course, are vac fillers um, in some way, shape or form, or, or they're vac fillers. And I've got my Pilot Metropolitan up here because I know it's a very well-known pin that a lot of people own. So from uh, working our way from the bottom, working up, we have the Winksung 3013, we have a pin BBS 456, and then we also have the 268, the kind of little sibling to the 456. We have a Pilot Custom 823, uh, we have a Schaefer Triumph, and then a Pilot Metropolitan. So you'll notice that the uh, Winksung definitely holds its own against these pins. Um, obviously the 823 is gonna be much larger, and that pin's in a classification all by itself, as well as the, the Schaefer for that matter. I just threw them in here just for the heck of it. Um, and uh, it is, uh, as far as length goes, somewhat similar to the 268. You know, you'll notice the 268 is just a slight shorter than the uh, 456. But as far as girth, it definitely um, holds its own against the 456. Now, we'll take a look at, um, really we're gonna focus on these three pins and I'll bring the Metropolitan back in, but we'll take a look at the pin um, in its unposted or uncapped form, just to be able to compare the sections, the nibs, um, and also the overall length uh, if you were riding with this pin. All right, so here we now see all four of these pins um, uncapped. So again, we have the 3013 Wingsung here, the 456, the 268, and the Pilot Metropolitan. So now you'll notice that the 3013, as far as overall length, is very similar to the 456. Um, maybe just a, a very hair larger, but not anything noticeable whatsoever. Um, as far as girth goes, ab about the same overall. I mean, obviously this one has more of that kind of torpedo or, or kind of cone type shape to it. Um, now, of course, we can look at the uh, sections. Now, one thing that 
obviously when you use this type of nib and feed setup, the nib is gonna be on the smaller side, comparatively speaking, to the pin BBS pins. So we're gonna be looking more like one of these pilot nibs. Very similar to like a number size five nib, if we were talking Western sizes. Um, so obviously number six nib would be great, but I don't, I don't really mind the nib. Um, as far as section goes, definitely it, it takes on its own design compared to the other three. And we'll kind of give a little bit more of a close up, just easier for me to pick these up. So of course here we can see the sections. Now I, I still think probably the, the nicest pin to write with and the most comfortable section out of these four is going to be the four, five, six. I have, uh, I love those hourglass styled sections. It just is perfect for my type of writing style. But the 3013 is not bad at all. Um, and then a 268 is a much smaller section. It's a smaller pen, of course. Um, and I find myself typically, I mean, I can write with the 268 unposted, but I do post it. Now, of course, the 456 and the 268, both the pen BBS models can post. The Pilot Metropolitan does post, not the best posting pen. The 3013 is the only one out of these four that does not. So again, get a little bit of a close up of those nibs as well as the sections, just to give you an idea. Of course, the Metropolitan kind of takes on its on its own uh, style there with the uh, section and stuff. So, but again, I definitely think it's a pin, very usable in a unposted form, uh, but now you can see it compared to these others. All right, so up next, I'm gonna post some weights and dimensions. Um, I'm all up on the screen. The weight, you know, this, this pin, um, I'll just give you a hint already. It's over 30 grams inked um, as far as the weight goes. So it's definitely a hefty pen. It's got a lot of weight there, a lot of metal, um, especially back here. So post those up. And then of course we will do a writing sample and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end on the pen. All right, everyone, so we are back for the writing sample for this pen. Now the ink that I'm using, um, I'll just go ahead and show that to you. And that is this ink, it's a Waterman ink, and this is Inspired Blue, a nice uh, light blue ink. Uh, really like this ink, I think it looks nice in the pen. It um, definitely, it's not a real dark blue, I think it looks good in this uh, transparent pen. I like the way it looks in the feet as well. All right, so, course we have the wing sung 3013 and of course this is the vac filler and this is an extra fine nib <coughs> do an actual writing sample here You know, as extra fine nibs go, this one um, definitely is not bad. It, it has, um, it gives you some feedback, of course, kind of that pencil -y type feedback, but it's pretty, pretty smooth. I mean, it, it writes well, um, a little bit springy, um, not, not too springy, but a little bit, you know, um, I don't, I have not had any hard starts with this pin, um, which, you know, there's no cap liner in there. So I think that O-ring, the, the design using with the O-ring, I think is working well. You know, as far as wetness goes, you know, bear in mind it's an extra fine nib, but it's not horrendous by any means. It's decent. Um, I'm sure you can kind of see some of that uh, sheen when, when the ink really first lays down on the paper. <clears throat> Do some swirlies here for you. So, Again, not, not a crazy as far as line variation goes, but it does give you a little bit of a springy feel. Not a, a, a very, not a bad nib to use by any means whatsoever. Uh, reverse writing, I haven't even tried it with this. I probably wouldn't. It's very dry. Not really scratchy though. 
I mean, you can make it work, but it's probably not, it's really not meant for that. It doesn't lay down a lot of ink, of course. Um, so, of course, uh, this pen technically was like $9.90. So um, I think I had to pay taxes. So probably around $11 altogether. Now, of course, there are the um, Paley branded ones that are I've seen on eBay and Etsy. I think Bob even has them now available on his Etsy side. In fact, I know he does. And those are available in a blue transparent and plus a green, if I'm not mistaken. So you have those options as well. And of course, this is also the, the Wingsung 3013 is available in this transparent. It's also available in a brown and uh, what a purple. So really you have five color options available on this pen. I think for $10, this is a great pen. I mean, it, it exceeds my expectations. I mean, I didn't have... I was excited for it, but it wasn't, I mean, for $10, I wasn't expecting anything crazy, but I think it's nice. Does it have its, you know, little bit, little kind of drawbacks? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a heavy pen. I wish it did post. I think it would be a little bit more appealing for some people. Um, you know, aesthetically speaking, it's not crazy, but I do like the fact that they threw in the, you know, the facets on the um, cap. I think that does add a little bit of aesthetic value to it. But I think for ten dollars, it's a great pen. Um, it'll be interesting to see. So I ordered the Paley version. Of course, it's going to come with a different type nib on it. And I think that's a fine nib that I'm getting with that one. So it will, uh, of course, when I get that, I'll do a video review on that one, and then also do a writing sample comparison with this pen uh, versus the Paley, just to see if there's any differences whatsoever between the two. But I really like this one. You know, no complaints whatsoever. It's a nice pen, writes well. Um, I think, you know, for 10 bucks, if you're wanting a vac filler, you've never invested on one of the four, five, sixes. Um, I think this one, you know, is nice. It's still cheaper than the 268. If you happen to lose it, you know, it's still $10, but it's not like you've invested, say, 40, 50, 60 bucks in a pen, and then you're really upset if it gets lost or even potentially stolen. Hopefully that never happens. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, pin review. And um, I really like this pin. I give it my endorsement, if that means anything to you. And definitely pick up one if you're able to. I think Bobby has them available. Um, I saw them on his AliExpress site today. Um, AliExpress, I'm sorry. I'm always murdering that. And then uh, I think they're on Etsy too. I, I could be wrong. Um, don't, don't hold me to that one. Until next time, everyone take care, please, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. All right, so i um, got a, another nib that I've been messing around with, and I was going to share that at the end of the video. So if you don't want to see it, you don't have to watch it. But this one um, I've done... A cut to kind of extend the uh, slit in the middle of the pen. Definitely not a very pretty look. Um, I did shave off some of the uh, tipping material to kind of make it a little bit more of a cursive italic and then of course I shaved the uh, sides of the um, shoulders of the nib just to allow it to kind of spread and flex. And you'll notice um, as far as a feed goes, that's an ebonite feed on there, and that is from Flexible Nib Factory. Just to give it a really nice ink flow, this is a Jinhao nib. Um, give it again a little bit of an up close, you can kind of see the Jinhao. Of course, I cut half of it out. So just to show this nib, kind of what it can do. So here's just normal writing. You'll notice very, very wet, extremely wet. That feed just spits ink out, um, which you kind of need for this nib to really do what it what, what it is meant to do so here we see kind of what it can do and you'll notice i mean the ink is bleeding through the page almost i mean you might not be able to see that but um now here's you know no pressure really 
there's more. It's about as far as I'm going to make it go. But you can definitely, uh, I, it's not a, not a perfect setup by any means, but um, you can see how it just spits out that ink. It's crazy. Um, I do have this pen. It's not eye drop, so it's um, cartridge converter. And I mean, I, I don't even know if I, I can't even write a full page with this uh, without it running out of ink. So again, not a, not a pen for like everyday writing, but I, I'm really pleased with how the nib turned out. Um, very ugly, uh, I would say, but I'm having fun, I promise. I know several of you have asked if I'm gonna do a, a video on showing how I do nib grinds. I, I'm very novice, but I promise I'll do something, at least explaining kind of the process and stuff. Uh, but there are better people than me to learn from. Um, so just thought I would share at the end of the video. Again, see you guys later. Bye.